had those little legs bent out, and the reason I bent them out as opposed to cutting them off is because I want to bend them back so that they can touch the fender and give the fender a little bit more support um, while, it, while it hangs up on the front, you know. Well, it's, it's kind of hanging out there in the middle of nowhere just getting buffered with wind, so if we have those little bitty legs kind of holding it in about two inches out from the frame where it's welded onto, then it's going to give us a little more rigidity. I got this trailer up in the air and what I noticed is we have an additional problem here. Okay, so <clears throat> take a look underneath here. These springs, these coil springs are connected together, right? And what happens is you're going down the road, you hit a bump on this side and it twists down and preloads the suspension on the rear to help you transfer that energy over to the back tire, correct? And vice versa. So as you're going over potholes and bumps, the suspension is working in Congress, right? So it's, it's working together. And um, the problem with this is, is check out the geometry of this, uh, this setup. This particular link is in the correct orientation, right? So what happens is as the spring comes up, it pushes this direction. This spring over here, however, is not in the correct orientation. It's at too, um, too low of an angle. It needs to be more of an aggressive angle. It needs to be slightly more vertical. What happens is as the tire goes up and the spring goes up, all it does is simply rotates on this point right here and this goes straight up and this whole piece just pivots upwards, right? And what that does is if you look right down there, you see that mark? It sets this axle at all times that this trailer is on the road. That axle is actually touching the frame. So the rear suspension is not working at all. Now look how uh, non-symmetrical that is. Like one is, one is in a proper position, almost vertical, and the other is just way off. Okay, so how do we correct this issue and why did it happen in the first place? Well, let's follow that spring back to the perch. Okay, do you see where this, this is right there? All right, that needs to move forward probably about an inch, right? That's just one inch and whoever built this trailer just didn't understand the importance of that. And since the day they built it, it's been riding on the axles. Ah. Ah. Ah, that's what I was worried about. Ah. Ah. All right. One strip bolt. We're gonna try a different socket that has more flattened edges. I'll have to put that one in first. <laughs> we got it off though. Now, I'm not trying to put any pressure on that suspension, I just want it to catch it. We can move our spring a little bit. Uh, that's where it gets dangerous. Okay, now I know how I want to line it up. So what we're going to do is go ahead and drop that axle down, get it out of the way. And the preferred tool for this is going to be a cutoff wheel. On a, on a four inch angle grinder would be best, but I don't have a four inch angle grinder here. So I'm going to have to be sweating through a uh, little bitty die grinder wheels and being at a rough angle to cut those, those uh, brackets off to move them forward. So it turns out I was thinking we'd be about an inch, but we're really somewhere in the neighborhood of three quarters, to, uh, three quarters of an inch, which is good. And that kind of shows you that Three quarters of an inch one direction or the other on suspension geometry is a huge, huge amount of space. Like that, that's pass fail. I mean, it, you either gotta get it right or, or it's wrong. And that's all there is to it. What happens when it goes wrong? Well, you're gonna be wearing all your tires out. They're not gonna work correctly. Um, you know, also your suspension's just gonna fail. Uh, so. All right, let's, let's get this thing lowered.
springs are pretty tight in here because it squeezes together uh, as you bolt it up. So I want it to be able to rotate freely. Okay, we're maxed out. Let's test it. Oh yeah. So let's let's compare. So that's going to allow me just to slide it back in real easy. Whereas this one is real jump, especially right there. I got to push real hard to get it up there. Okay. It looks good, the trailer's level. My job here's done. Actually, now I can start doing the job that I originally wanted to do when I pulled the trailer in here, which is put some fenders on it. I had to cut this inner fender because it didn't fit uh, inside the panel, so I cut about an inch off of it. Fits good inside there. I'm just gonna weld that up and then uh, we'll throw it on. Not even gonna record that. Okay. Rosebud? Fire. Fire's good. I have made fire. So we welded on those fenders, inners and outers, and they're nice and level. And this is where we tied in that metal I was telling you about. Let me check the welds. Ah, they're okay. And uh, like I said, both inner and outer. And I went ahead and ground this at an angle as I before I welded it so that I'd get maximum penetration on them. You know, you gotta get that maximum penetration on 14 gauge steel. <laughs> And uh, mainly, I guess the main thing we did was something we weren't expecting, which was leveling that thing out and getting it to ride right. The back suspension wouldn't even work. Hey, uh, climb up on there, boss. Give me a little bounce. Much better. <laughs> Excellent job. <laughs> 